Have you ever wished that there was a way to have a cut list on a drawing in Fusion that updated if you ever changed your design? Well, there is a way, and that's to use a custom table. Let me show you what they are and how they work. So in this video, I have an example uh, custom door that I've created that is built with uh, some parameters. So you can see I have, for example, door height and door width. Uh, we've got some style width, some rail widths, etc. We're going to come back to these here in a little bit. And then I've created a drawing of that door assembly. And here is that custom table that I was talking about. And I've already built most of this out. I'll show you how I did this. Um, but the key thing here is you'll notice that uh, it has some fields in here such as the door style, the width, the length, the wood species, and then some of the individual components such as the top rail, bottom rail, the top panel, bottom panel, and then it has length and width. Uh, it even has, for example, the total mass of the whole door. And what this allows us to do is if we were to come in and make some changes. So for example, uh, I'm just going to come into properties and change the description. So let's just call this door panel um, smooth or something like that. I'll say OK. We change some of the parameters such as the overall height. Let's just make this a 92 inch door. So I'm going to say 92 and you can see that that grew a little bit and then let's make it uh, 42 inches wide and you can see um, because of the parameters the door updated automatically. Uh, the same thing with the bottom rail I could say let's make that uh, 12 inches and it made that bottom rail um, a little bit taller. So I'll go ahead and say okay let's save this design and then if we go over into the drawing, you'll notice the drawing says changes have been made. Uh, so, so watch what happens to this table when I click on uh, this update the references. So you'll see the, the description, the door style name has changed. Um, the length is now 92, the width is now 42, and all of these updated. So you can see, for example, the bottom rail is now 12 inches wide. So it's almost like a, a cut list for each of these individual pieces that are on this drawing. So how do we go about creating this? Well, it's under the tables pull down. There's this custom table. And if I click on custom table, it'll allow me to, to place this table. I'll go ahead and place it up here um, for now. And I'm just gonna move this view just a little bit. And I'll, I'll zoom up on this area. And you'll notice as I hover over it, it kind of highlights. And this allows me to, to pick on this and I can change it just like any other table. I can move these uh, column sizes around. If I click in any of these fields, or any of these cells, uh, it brings up this table option. And what's kind of cool about this is it allows you to edit the columns and the rows. So for example, let's just say I click on this one here, you'll notice it says insert row above or insert row below or delete the selected row. So if I say insert row below, it's gonna add in another row. If I click on that one there and I say delete this row, it's going to go ahead and delete those rows for me. Same thing um, with the columns. I can add a column to the left or add a column to the right if I want to. So it allows you to modify the, the shape and size of your table. If you just double click into any of these cells, it allows you to add some text. So for example, I could say, you know, width, hit enter. On this one, I could type in height and hit enter. And on this one, I could type in mass. And so you can fill in just with regular text any of these fields. Now where the magic happens is when we double click in here, you'll notice, and I'm gonna move this out here just so it's a little bit easier to see. You'll notice right here, this in this properties area, so the design is our custom door, and then you'll notice it says source. And if I click on 
this source right here, you'll see a list of all of my components. So the top level is the custom door. And then I have, for example, the bottom rail and the lock rail and the short panel, etc. So I'm going to start with this custom door. Then we have different types. So I'm going to start with general. And you can see we can put in, for example, the part number, the part name, the description, or the material. And that's what I did over here. For the door style, I put in the description. And so when I edited the description in the um, properties on the custom door, and I changed the name in the description, that's why it updated here. Uh, in fact, I'll go ahead, let's just do, let's go ahead and do this really quick. I'm going to add in a, another um, row here. I'll just type in uh, material. And let's double click on this guy here. I'll do the custom door. I'll say general. And let's just pick on material. Now, it doesn't look like anything's happening. And you have to insert this property. So I'm going to hit the plus symbol there and it just added in the material attribute into this field or into this cell right there. Okay, let's go back here to the, the width. I'll double click on that guy. So we just talked about general, which is, you know, part number, part name, description, or material. Then we have physical which in this case is just the mass. So obviously we would do that down there. And then we have parameter. And this is where you can specify all of the different parameters. And you'll notice at the top level, I just have this door width. So I'm gonna go ahead and click on door width and hit the insert property and it puts that door width in there. I'm gonna go ahead and click on the height field and you'll notice that there is no height in here. And that's because I actually described the height in a different part or a different component. And that was actually in this um, lock style. And you can see right there, it says door height. So I'm gonna go ahead and pick on door height and insert that property. And again, I'll show you where I created these in just a moment. Okay, then we'll do the same thing for the mass. I'll go ahead and double click in here, change that to physical, and enter in mass. And we can see that it's putting in the mass. I'll say okay. Uh, and notice, here's <laughs> I look at this and it says 10 pounds. I'm like, that seems kind of kind of light. Well, that's because it's actually the source is just the style. So I want to make sure I click the whole door and you'll notice it didn't update. If I insert the property, it's going to insert it again. So you'll notice it puts it in again. So I'm going to go ahead and highlight everything, hit the plus, and now I get the total weight. Now I'll go ahead and adjust the, uh, the width of this to make the, um, this look a little bit better for the total width there. I could even come in and say we don't need um, these last two columns for example and I now have this table. So that's how you go about creating a custom table and obviously I spend a little bit more time uh, creating this one over here. Now I have this first mullion and that's this actually piece of wood right here and the second mullion right here. Um, and I left these blank because I wanted to show you an issue um, that we need to resolve. So for example, I'm going to click in here. Uh, we're going to do the parameter. I'm going to pick on first mullion. And if I click on the property, I don't see any of these dimensions that really make sense. <laughs> I know this is obviously longer than four inches and longer than an inch and a half. So I don't have a dimension to pick from there. And that's actually how I designed the part. So I'm gonna jump back into my custom door and 
let's go ahead and activate this first mullion. And what I ended up doing, without going into too much detail, uh, is I started with these um, side rails, and then I created um, the, uh, the horizontal top rail, and the bottom rail, and um, this lock rail, etc. Positioned them in place. Once the frame was kind of where they needed to be, I then projected the geometry of these and used that projected geometry to position where this piece needed to be. And what that's the reason I did that is if the door width changed, this would always stay centered. Um, if the door height changed, this piece would grow. So if we actually look at the sketch, there's only one dimension on here, and that's actually a, a reference to the style width. But you'll notice that there's no dimension for the height. The only thing you'll see is a midpoint constraint and a midpoint constraint. So there's no dimension for the uh, table to reference. So I'm gonna go ahead and add in a dimension, but you'll notice when I do this, it says it would over constrain the sketch. Do you wanna create a driven dimension instead? And I'm gonna say yes, create a driven dimension. And the reason it would over constrain it is because this edge has to stay touching this top rail, and this edge has to stay touching this mid rail, no matter where they are. Um, and so that's why if we were to try and dimension that, it would say it's over constrained. So now we have a 50 inch dimension here. Uh, so let's go ahead and accept that. And I'll save this drawing or this um, design. And if we go over into our drawing now, you'll notice it says changes have been made. So I'll go ahead and update the reference. And now if I go into this mullion, let me move this off to the side. We'll pick on first mullion parameter. And now you can see that there is a 50 inch uh, dimension in there. So I'll go ahead and insert that into the property. I'll come over here and we'll do the four inch for the width. And we now have this first mullion dimension. And then let's just go back to the 3D model and make some, some major changes just so you can see how this table will update. So let's go back here. I'll activate the top level. Um, one of the things I'm going to do is change the physical material. So um, let's make this out of mahogany. So I'm just going to drag mahogany onto there. Let's change the, um, the name. So four panel, I'll just say four panel, you know, demo door. And let's change some of the parameters. So the style width, I want that to be six inches now. And we can see how all of the styles updated to be six inches wide. Um, the door height, let's just make that 84. And the door width, um, let's just make that, um, well, let's, let's make it 40 in this case. And um, for the bottom rail, let's make that 10 just to make it a little bit different. So we can see that those panels updated accordingly. And we'll save. Jump over to the, the drawing, hit update. And we can see that all of this stuff updated. So the bottom rail went from 12 to 10 and everything updated accordingly. So that is how you can create a custom tables um, and use the parameters inside of the custom tables to select whether you want general, physical, or parameters and point to specific dimensions or parameters from your parameter table. I hope you learned something new and enjoyed that video. If you did, make sure you like and subscribe to be notified of upcoming videos. If you need help learning Fusion, visit my webpage at cadedllc.com. And as always, have fun learning Fusion.